Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you guys are here today to study God's word with me. Today is the second video in this six part series where we are gonna be studying the book of Ephesians, going chapter by chapter, in depth studying this book of the Bible and this letter that Paul has written. So if you guys have not seen the last video, please go ahead and watch that one first so that you guys can get some of the context in that video. I really went in depth in the context and the background and who wrote it and why he wrote it and um, who he was writing it too and so if you guys really want to get some good in-depth context for the book of Ephesians go ahead and watch that video first today we are going to be digging into chapter 2 so this is the second part of the series um, and then next week we'll do chapter 3 and the next week chapter 4 and so on and so on and so I'm really really excited for this and it, for this series last week's video was super fun to make and today studying for this video was really fun and just preparing for this video was a lot of fun I'm so pumped and so excited to study this with you guys and these kind of videos are some of my favorite videos to make because I love getting to share the word of God with people and just to study the God the word of God with people it is so much fun so without further ado grab your Bibles if you guys have Bibles I'm going to be using a ES version as well as an NLT. I'll kind of be going back and forth and then I just have some notes so grab some coffee, grab some highlighters, some pens, your Bible, notebook to take some notes and let's get into chapter two of Ephesians. If you guys have not already subscribed to my channel, please do not forget to do so. I do tons of Bible studies on here, as well as videos about my life, and lifestyle vlogs, and things like that. I'm 20 years old, just got married last August, and we are pregnant with our very first baby. So lots of pregnancy videos coming up and lots of really exciting vlogs that have to do with that coming up. So if you guys are not subscribed, do not forget to subscribe and give this video a like if you guys like it. I'm super pumped, but anyways, let's just stop blabbering, let's, let's do what you guys came here for let's study chapter 2 of Ephesians something that I think is extremely crucial extremely vital to do before getting into God's Word is to pray and um, we are going to be spending time in God's Word this is a very very important thing um, and <laughs> this is the most vital thing that we have in our lives and so I want to pray that we will really soak in God's Word and that we will um, the information will 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 stick with us and so I'm gonna go ahead and pray for us really quick if you guys want to pray with me Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity for my friend and I to sit down together and do this study right now um, freely in the comfort of our own homes, of our cars, our workplaces, wherever we're at. Thank you that we have the opportunity to sit here and look on look on the, uh, the internet, on the phone, whatever it is that they're watching this, to study the Bible together. And I just thank you, I thank you so much for your, your word that you've given us, for this gift that you freely have given us, Jesus. And I just pray today that we will soak in the richness of your word, Jesus, and that we, every single word will um, will speak to us, and that none of my words, all of my words will fall idle, Jesus. I don't want anything that is said today to be my words, but I want them to be your spirit's words speaking through me. And so use me, Jesus. Let this um, come across clearly, and let us enjoy reading your word, because it is a privilege and an honor to sit here and to be able to read your word. And so thank you so much, Jesus. Again, we are so thankful to be able to read this together right now. And I just thank you for my friend that is watching this, and I bless them, and I bless their minds and their spirits, and I pray that we will both soak in and learn from this Bible study. So we love you, Jesus. Amen. Okay guys, so we're, without further ado, we're just gonna get into the study. Like I mentioned last week, we went into the context and all that stuff. I'm just gonna give you three little reminders of just what we studied, just so you guys don't have to go back and read it all over again or watch it all over again. So the three things I'm gonna talk about is the author, the recipient, and the date. So to review of last week, the author of Ephesians is Paul, Paul the Apostle. The recipients of this book were was the Church of Ephesus and um, kind of written to the saints, meaning that they were already believers. So this book, when you're reading it, keep in mind that he is reading to people who are already believers. He's not reading, he's not writing to people who have never heard the name of Jesus before. He is writing to people who are saints 
quote unquote. And so they're already believers. Um, and it is also written kind of in the context to be passed on to other churches in the area. And so it wasn't written solely with the intent of Ephesus. It was written originally for the church of Ephesus, but it was written to um, be passed along to other churches as well. So that's really encouraging to know that this is still relevant today. We can still pass this around in our churches and we still know that it's going to be relevant and um, mean something to us today. And so it's really important to know when studying this. And then thirdly, the date. Um, this was written around 60 to 62 AD. Um, and this was when Paul was imprisoned in Rome. And so before this in around 50 AD, Paul was actually in Ephesus and he was actually on a missionary journey in Ephesus. And he was along there with Priscilla and Aquila and he actually helped plant the church in Ephesus. And so this is about 10 years later in his life um, where he is imprisoned in Rome and he is writing a letter back to the church of Ephesus where he was at 10 years previously. So that is just a quick little recap of the context. Again, I know that was super fast, blah, blah, blah. But if you guys have watched the other video, you guys have already heard it. So if you guys have not watched that one, go back and watch that one for a really in-depth um, context and background of Ephesians. But just want to throw that out there to remind you to spark a little bit of memory um, about really what this is about. So now we're going to be moving on into the chapter two of Ephesians. So excited. This is such a good chapter. I mean, the whole book of Ephesians is so good, but I love chapter two so much. So I love to break down the, the books that I read and the chapters that I read. So when I'm reading a chapter, I like to see what are the different sections? Um, how can I break this down into different themes, different points, different sections? And so I actually, my Bible, a lot of times our Bibles automatically do this for us and they will they will break it down into sections for us. And that is the little title that you see at the beginning of a, a, a paragraph or a section of verses. So in my Bible, it actually gave me really good, clear titles and sections that I'm just gonna continue following because I think it's a really good separation of the sections. And first we have by grace through faith. Second, we have oneness in Christ. And then actually in my NLT version, it has a third section and it's called a temple for the Lord. And so those are three sections, but today we're gonna to be focusing on two. And the first one being by grace through faith, the second one being oneness in Christ. And so in section one, I have also broken it down into two parts. So um, it is section one with two parts, section two with three parts. So hopefully that makes sense. I will put a picture right here of my notes so that you guys can screenshot them if you wanna have a more visual of what I'm talking about here. But if you guys can follow along and just take your own notes, that is super great. So really quick before we actually read and get into the scripture and read chapter two, I did wanna go through the breakdown that I came up with. So in section one that is titled By Grace Through Faith in My Bible, I actually split it up into two more groups. And it's split up in verses one through three and verses four through 10. Verses one through three are really focusing on, um, on the fact that you were dead in your sins and you followed the world and your flesh and you concerned with you were concerned with only your selfish desires. And so that first part of chapter two, Paul's really writing to the church and, and saying um, that you used to be you used to live in your flesh, you used to live in your desires of the world um, in your sins. And then in section in the next part we have verses four through ten and it talks about but now but now you live in Christ and his mercies made you alive in Christ. By his great grace through our faith, we are saved and set free. It is a gift and not our own doing. And then we go into section two, which talks about oneness in Christ. And it talks a lot about unity. You guys will see that a lot throughout Ephesians. Ephesians focuses a ton on unity. It is a book mainly about unity. And that is because he is writing to this church in Ephesus and, and currently in the when he was writing this, the church of Ephesus was facing a lot of division because of the Jews and the Gentiles. And so they were kind of still struggling facing that division. They weren't being unified in Christ. And so verses 11 through 12, the first part of section two, um, is kind of Paul acknowledging the division in the church um, and acknowledging that they were living outside of Christ and that um, division is what happens when you live outside of Christ. And then he goes on in verse 13 through 18 he says that but now but but because they were in Christ they were united and so um, his sacrifice on the cross 
um, erase the separation and they all had access to the spirit because they lived in Christ and so um, they didn't have to live in that in that disunity in that division anymore um, because Christ purchased their their unity on the cross and he broke down the wall of hostility on the cross and then the last part of section 2 is verses 19 through 22 um, and it kind of talks about how we are built on a foundation of apostles and prophets um, and we are joined together so the the way that we are unified the way that the church is unified um, the way that the Jews and the Gentiles are able to be unified was because of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was the cornerstone and so um, later on we'll look at the, like a cornerstone and what is a cornerstone um, but that is kind of what he's talking about he talks about what it means to be unified and how we are unified in Christ so I know that was a ton of information I hope you guys were able to take notes again I'll put a note I'll put my thing here again so that you guys can screenshot it and pause it if you guys want to write down everything I just said in your own notes go ahead and do that I know that was pretty much word vomit and really confusing so there you go that is just my breakdown of chapter two so now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna read chapter two because what is the Bible study without actually studying the Bible so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to actually read um, chapter two of Ephesians together without further ado we're gonna start and we're gonna start in where Paul is talking about being dead in and in, in living in our flesh so it starts off with chapter 2 verse 1 it says this and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world following the prince and the power of the air the spirit that is not work in the sons of disobedience among who we once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the in the mind and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind so that's pretty intense there that's the first part that we have and that is in section one where he's talking about how we lived when we were outside of christ and how we actually lived like people of the world we lived in our fleshes we lived in our sins we lived as slaves to our sins and then in verse four it starts off with this it says but god and so that automatically tells us that we are in a new a new thought we are in a new section of this chapter because we are going into you once lived like this but because you live in Christ, this is how you live. And so this is the second section. And it says, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated him in heavenly places in Jesus Christ so that the coming of the ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in christ jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith i know we all know that verse and this is not your own doing it is the gift of god workmanship created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them you guys, those first two sections are so good. Talking about by grace through faith, it is insane to think about. By his grace through our faith, we are no longer dead to our sins, but we are made alive in Christ. And so that is so encouraging to know, so, so uplifting to know that we don't have to live as people of the world. We don't have to live um, as slaves to our sins. We don't have to be dead, but we can be made alive through him. And it's not anything that we can do, not anything that any, any works that we can do to, to earn this, but it's by his grace. He, he gives it to us freely. It is a gift. And so that is so amazing to know that it is by his grace, a free gift to us through our faith, through believing in him and through having life in him that he makes us alive in Christ. And that is insane. So now we are going into section two and section two has three parts to it. Again, I hope this is making sense. Hopefully I can figure out some way to put it on the screen to make this make sense. But section two has three parts to it, okay? So the first part in section two is talking about um, the, the, the division that was in the church. And this is Paul acknowledging the division in the church. And so it says this, verse 11, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what it was called the circumcision, which is made the flesh by hands. 
Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Jeez, I don't want to live that way. Oh my gosh. So Paul's acknowledging that, that division here and he's saying that, you were living having no hope and without God in the world. And that's exactly what we're called not to do. Um, we're called to live in the world, but not of the world. And so we cannot live in this world without God. Um, and that's kind of what he was saying is was causing this division was it literally says that um, they were they were separating themselves by circumcised, uncircumcised, and um, they were separated from Christ. So then we go in verse 13, and that is where it gets good again, because it says, but now. It's always the but that is good. Don't make fun of me, I know, I know. But it's always the but in scriptures that it's truly, truly redeeming, and it's, it's going back to the, the, the positive side. And so now we are in part two of this section, and it says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down the flesh, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he created in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross by killing the hostility. That was a lot, but basically what he's saying here is Jesus Christ on the cross bought our unity, bought our freedom, bought our unity. And when he died on the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ broke down the wall of hostility so that we no longer had to be divided, but we were able to be unified through him, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So picking up here in verse 17, and he came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. And so he's saying here, the, the, the you're connected because you both you all have access to the Holy Spirit through the Father. You guys are both in Christ. Um, don't know why there's division here because you're both in Christ. You guys both are in the kingdom of God. You have both have access to the Father through one spirit. That is what's unifying them. And even today we can think about I can be connected to somebody on the other face of the planet because I am connected with them to the to the Father through the same exact spirit that they're connected to the Father through. And so I can pray to God and they can pray to God at the same time and it's all through one spirit and that's what unifies us in the kingdom of God. And so that is in part two where he's kind of saying, you know, but Jesus is the reason that you guys can be unified and I am calling you to unity because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't have to live in hostility. You don't have to live in this um, the separation where you building walls because Jesus Christ's blood broke down that wall and you no longer have to live that way. And so that is amazing to know. And that is so, uh, so incredible. And so I just really like how Paul was acknowledging that um, there was no more separation in the kingdom of God because when you're in the kingdom of God, you are all, you're all connected by the spirit. And then that leads us into our final and third point in section two and that is the section where he's talking about being in the temple of the lord or being the temple of the lord so verse 19 says this so then you are no longer strangers and aliens but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god built on the foundation of apostles and prophets christ jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And so here he's really telling us that Christ, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And and when we think about what is a cornerstone, what what is he even meaning here? I don't understand, Chloe, I don't understand. I don't know, I don't know what he's talking about here. It's a cornerstone, what does that even mean? So when you think about an actual cornerstone, when you are actually building a building, you're building a house, um, and you have, you start with a foundation, obviously, right? And so he's saying the foundation of the household of God, of the church, is apostles and prophets. But, but you cannot have a foundation without a cornerstone to help you 
build the walls. And so Jesus Christ is the cornerstone that connects. He's the one that connects everything together. And so the cornerstone is the thing that's connecting the walls, that's connecting the foundation. And so it literally says Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being grown together grows into the holy temple of the Lord. And so we cannot grow into a holy temple of the Lord without Christ as a cornerstone. We cannot grow into the body, into the building, the temple of the Lord without Jesus Christ, we cannot. And so here he's saying that we are unified because of Jesus Christ and without Jesus Christ of course we're going to be of course we're going to be having caused causing division of course and that's why he's really saying that if you are living in division you're not living in Christ you're not living in in the temple of Jesus Christ because Christ is the cornerstone and you, you can't have a building without a cornerstone um and so that is kind of that final section where he's saying um that is what it's like and the last verse says in him you are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And so when Christ is the cornerstone, when you're building that building and the foundation, you are creating a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And so the church is supposed to be a dwelling place for God. God is supposed to be able to dwell there. Um, and, and that is exactly what Paul is writing to about the church of Ephesus. And eventually, like we know, like we read, um, like we studied, that he, it was, this was a letter to later go on to more churches and so obviously this is something that's important for churches to know for members of the body of christ to know and so knowing that we can still we can still apply this to our churches today we can this is still relevant god's word is alive and it is active um his word is not dead and so this is still applicable to our churches today and to how our ministry is run today and so that is chapter two crazy 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 i know and so i know that was a lot of things i just threw at you and i know there was a lot of sections and points and oh my gosh what is she talking about so much stuff and so i wanted to kind of simplify it for you and break it down into two main points so we're going to break it down kind of review what we just read and it's only going to be two main points that's all i have for you okay two points hopefully that you guys can get that let's write them down okay so point number one comes from that first section which is where we're talking about by grace through faith and so in point number one we are realizing that as children of god we no longer have to live by our flesh and our worldly desires we live by the spirit and have been set free through christ we have been given the gift of grace freely because of Jesus Christ. We don't have to work for it. It's done by grace through faith. Um, and so looking back on that, we really know that we don't have to live in our flesh. We don't have to live by our selfish, worldly, sinful desires. Because when we are in Jesus Christ, when we are born again believers who are, who are truly born again believers, who have repented for our sins, um, Jesus Christ gives us the free gift of grace um, and it is by his grace through our faith in him that we are made alive in Christ. We're not dead to our sins, but we are alive in Christ. And so that is point number one. That is one of the main points. That is the first main point of chapter two is by grace through faith. It is that his grace is given to us freely. And then the second main point, obviously it's talking about oneness in Christ. And this is, this is what I think is the main focus of chapter two um it is the oneness in christ and it's saying that there may, be, may there might be division in the church there might be days or times or seasons where division is caused in your church but that is not how the church is supposed to run this the second point is that but now we are all united in christ because of his sacrifice on the cross um it erased the separation it erased the walls of hostility and now we all have access to the same father through the same spirit um and so there's no separation there and that we're all one church one body of christ built on the foundation with christ as the cornerstone um and that is the second main section is just oneness in christ and really what it means um for a church for a ministry for a body to be one in christ and so i know that was a lot to study i know that was a lot of wow like a lot of stuff um i will go ahead and i will take a picture 
of my notes, like I said, and I'll put it again right here that you guys can screenshot if you guys missed it the last two times. I just want to make sure that you guys can really get this and really soak it in because this is so important. I'll also put a picture of my Bible right here because I actually highlighted it in different colors so that I could mentally see the different sections that I wanted to touch on to talk about. So the blue sections are the parts where he's talking about what we, how we used to live, how we live outside of Christ, and then the pink sections are when he's talking about um, what it means to live in Christ and, and what we um, can, can have freely through Christ. Um, we have grace through Christ and we have unity through Christ. And that is beautiful. We, we used to live dead. We used to live in division. We used to live in, our, in the world, in our sinful desires and, and worldly desires. But, and, and we used to live without God in the world. But now we, we have God's grace that is freely given to us and we are made alive in Christ. But now we are unified in Jesus Christ because of his sacrifice on the cross and because he is our cornerstone and he is what connects all of us into one body and one church. And so I really, really hope that this chapter um, was edifying for you, that you guys learned th from it, that you guys really enjoyed studying this with me. I love studying the Bible with you. I love doing this series with you guys. It is so, so much fun. Um, next week, if you guys want to come back, we're going to be studying at chapter three. And in this one, it's talking about the mystery of the gospel revealed. And then it says prayer for spiritual strength. So you know that's gotta be good. I mean, you know it's gonna be good. So come back next week. We'll be studying chapter three. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you guys took notes, if you guys journaled in your Bible, if you guys highlighted, whatever it was, I would love to see pictures. So if you guys want to tag me on Instagram, my Instagram is just Chloe J. Roy, the same as my YouTube. Um, and I would love to see them. I'll repost all of them. I just love seeing when you guys are engaged in the word as well. It is so encouraging and so good to know that I'm not doing this for nothing, but God's actually working through these videos and God's speaking to you guys through YouTube, which is just so insane. It's so insane to have a community on YouTube. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even. Anyways, I love you guys so, 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 so much. If you guys did like this study and you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm not a Bible scholar. I am not a pastor, a teacher. I'm not anything. I am simply a woman, a girl who loves the Lord, loves the Bible, and I'm just trying to um, make this app applicable to today and kind of relate it to um, the world today and I and I know how difficult it is to study the Bible and so I'm no in no way saying that I'm the best at any of this I had a moment today this morning where I was very very discouraged because I don't feel like I do as deep of studies as some people do but then I have to remember that this is the way that I study the Bible this is the way that I love to study the Bible is kind of just reading it and and soaking it in and so if you guys like that kind of that kind of study please subscribe because that's mainly the kind of things that I do here anyways I'm gonna stop blabbering on I love you guys so 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 much more than you'll ever know and I'll see you guys in my next video thank you guys for tuning in I love y'all